Guys, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> Today's video is gonna be all about this brand new Mad Jax six inch A-arm lift kit for the Club Car DS. I'm gonna take this Project Club Car DS, get it up in the air six inches so we can get the proper suspension underneath this thing, not for big tires, but for the Navitas five kilowatt, 600 amp uh, DC to AC motor swap. So <clears throat> I'm gonna just show this. I like showing this cart because I love this cart. It's my new cart, but we're gonna get this suspension up six inches, just like this one is on this one here, and I'm gonna use this Mad Jax kit. This kit was sourced by golfcartsmodified.com, gcmod.com. I'm gonna plug them the entire time I'm doing this series because I don't think I've ever had better customer service than the guys over at Golf Carts Modified. Uh, so if you need a Mad Jax six inch A-arm lift kit, go to gcmod.com. I'll put a link down below in the description to this exact kit on their website, and you can pick one up. Um, I think I paid like 500 bucks for it. So. We are gonna start by taking the front cowl off of this thing, wheels and tires, getting it up on a jack, jack stands, all the, the normal stuff. I'll show you once I put it all up on there what you gotta do, spare you some uh, explanation here, so let's go. So the first step on this is to get the cart up on top of some jack stands, regular old Harbor Freight specials, nothing, nothing too crazy, the cart's not too heavy. I didn't use a jack to lift it, you can just lift it up and set it on there. Uh, and the next thing we're gonna do is start pulling these wheels and tires off of here. If you got these old school hubcaps, you can just pry them right off. Screwdriver. In one corner. And that'll expose the dust caps. And this brings me to my next point in this video. If you're gonna order one of these Magjack six inch lift kits, Make sure you specify if you have steel dust caps, which these are steel, or if yours are the uh, plastic ones, which are usually black. These happen to be steel. Once you got them loose, you can take these monster truck tires off of here and expose the little baby hubs. Bye bye, 18 by 8.5s. Take these uh, dust caps off, get a, a flathead screwdriver, and what I just did was tapped it just ever so slightly back here, right here in the groove, kind of uh, pointing downward and then I'm twisting right now. And the trick is, so you don't bend the crap out of these things, is just to do equal force all the way around. And I can already feel that these bearings are shot in here. I might need to get some new hubs, actually. Look at that, that resistance. That's no good. So we gotta get these off. Um, so just kind of go around and work it with the screwdriver. Just try not to bang the hell out of these things because it's like this little light aluminum and it, or light steel and it will bend. I'm just gonna keep working it on camera. Just twisting it. Yeah, this is pretty, our bearing's pretty bad in there. I'm trying to one hand this here, yeah, it's coming. There we go. That way, this one here. There we go. A little exposed this little castle nut, which is your hub nut. And there's probably going to be a, yeah, there's a cotter pin in there. So that's what we're going to take out next. See, someone's already busted that cotter pin off of there. But what I do is I have a screwdriver in here and I'm just prying downward on the cotter pin and it will release out of here. You can see it moving. Greasy job. I should probably throw some gloves on this thing, but yeah, we'll pry it out about that far. Then I can snatch it with some pliers. Vice grip, pulled it right out. So for this job, I'm gonna put a link down below, Amazon affiliate link, where you can get this set of sockets, these Nico sockets. I'm running on a Impact Makita here, but Impact's gonna be your friend on hub nuts. Like if you've ever done any Civ Honda Civic work, you'll know what I mean. Pulls it right off, no problem, no stress. And you get your hub nut off like that. Here's a set of sockets I was talking about. This is my Impact set. I did a video on these years back and I've been using them I mean, I use them all the time. I try to keep them clean and they just, they keep going. They keep chugging along. So definitely get this, get a set of those. So the hardware that came off of here, castle nut and a washer, I just cleaned them up. And then I'm just gonna slide this out, get bad bearings and all here. Hopefully it'll just pull out. Oh, it's, look at that. That bearing's fried. You see that there guys? Look at that. That's how you know it's done. Stick a fork in it. Yeah, this is gonna need some persuasion. Let me two-hand this thing. 
that's pretty bad, that bearing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a link down below where you can get some hubs. And that's the spindle that it came off of. So let's get some hubs ordered. All right, next I'm gonna tackle this tie rod end and we're gonna start with this little ball joint here. And we got a little rusty uh, old, old, old ball joint with a cotter pin right here. You can see, I'm gonna pry that out with a uh, plier of my fingers here. Try not to rip my glove and then I'll pull that nut off of there. So I got a 9 16 ratchet I'm gonna throw on here. And this one was already loose from when I did the um, cotter pin, which is kind of sketchy. This thing is just old. You guys got one of these DS's, you'll know what I mean. I mean, these things are just, they need to be rebuilt, even if you're not gonna lift it. These parts get worn. That's a castle nut, you wanna keep that nut. So the best way to separate these joints, a pickle fork, that's what I call these. I'll put a link down below. You can grab one on Amazon, but I just kind of wedge it in there. Take a hammer, try to do this one-handed, and just kind of give it a couple whacks. it up, which it is, and then I'll try to do it one more time here off camera to give it a good smack. One more smack here, there we go. All right, so while you got this thing apart, don't do the hack move and keep these on here. I mean, mine are shot. Spend a few bucks on Amazon, get you some new joints. These are tie rod end part number, you can read it there, you can pause the video. Throw a link down below. I'm gonna put these on here and paint this tie rod black all the way so it looks nice and clean under there. But yeah, you can tell these things, These boot, this boot's gone. This boot's gone. Once the boots are gone and tie rod ends or ball joints, they're useless. There's nowhere for the grease to stay. So you also don't wanna over tighten these things when you put them in, it's flared right here. That's why I had to use a pickle fork to take them out. See that flaring, it's smaller on this side, larger on this side, they seat themselves. So you just gotta snug them up, put the castle nut on and put the cotter pin through, so. We'll go ahead and put this on. So what I do is I put these tie rod ends in my vise and then I break them loose. You're gonna use a three quarter inch wrench on these and loosen them off. So one side is tightened to loosen and the other side is lefty loosey. So there we go, these are both loose. So let's take these out of the tie rod and put some new tie rod ends in here. All right, next I'm gonna take off these old spindles, three quarter inch socket on the end here. I'm gonna throw them on my impact for fun. Now that the nut's off, I can lift this up. That'll just roll down like that. And remember, you got a washer up here. I like keeping all my hardware and keeping it near me because you never know what the kits are gonna have or don't have. So if you toss stuff or lose stuff, you can't find it. So now let's work on the rest of this. Okay, 916 socket and wrench on this lower spindle portion here. I'm gonna replace in my whole spring. Again, there'll be links down below in the description where you can get all these parts. I'm replacing my lower spring, but I'm gonna take this off just to show you guys in the video because you guys might not be doing your spring. Why you're not doing your spring when you're this far along, I don't know, but some people don't. Do all these parts, I'm telling you. Do all this stuff and the thing will drive like new. That's what it'll look like with that spindle out of there. Nice and open, crappy spring. This is why I'm trying to tell you about the springs. Look at these bushings, look at that. It's just dry rotted garbage. Definitely time to be replaced. Okay, 9 16 on the A-arm bolts. You can see here, here's the whole shot. 9 16 9 16 get that one off of there. Get that one off of there. Repeat everything on the other side. Get these old existing A-arms out of here. You're not reusing these anymore, but I'm telling you, keep this stuff. You never know when you're gonna need it. So I got the two bolts out of there. Came out nice and easy. You gotta take this one all the way out first because this one won't slide out because the head of it's here. So no big deal. Pull that A-arm out of there. Look at that old retired A-arm. Wow, 22 years of service, thank you. So taking you under here, one, next thing you wanna do, get this spring and plate out of here. So it's got some 916 bolts. These things have seen better days here. Get a shaft bolt, comes all the way down here. So you're gonna have to hold one end and get the other. There's one over here, one back here and same on the other side. And that's what they look like up underneath the cart. So let me work on these, get these out of here. I got the nuts and bolts off of each corner on this little shock tower. I forgot to mention too in the beginning of the video, take your shocks out. I mean, that's simple, two bolts on each one, but 
So that's all out of there. And now this should be freed up to drop. So I'm gonna try to do this on camera and see if I can just smack it down. But these, these bolts right here are kind of stuck in there. So I'm probably gonna have to get the hammer. I thought it might be cool in the video though. out and then we got these guys here she's loose now just get this one out all right gotta get the hammer thought this would be interesting to get on video. I just started loosening this bolt. I mean, look at how much time made rust and actually caused this bolt to thread into my frame. So watch as I loosen here, this whole thing's gonna drop. <laughs> oh man, 22 years were not kind to you. Good thing these things are made out of aluminum because I have a feeling this particular club car would have been a pile of rust by this amount of time because all the hardware is just rusty. So at this stage of the game, if you guys are playing along with me, it's uh, clean up on aisle six time. So pause what you're doing, clean all this up. So what I like to do is take all this stuff out of here that's not gonna be used on the rebuild and get it out of here, clean up my workspace and have a nice clean area to work in. I also came back through a little bit of flat black, touched up some areas that didn't get the flat black treatment because I want it to be all blacked out. So now's the time to clean up and also visit gcmod.com and order this thing if you haven't already. Workspace is cleaned up. Now it's time to see what's in the box. Mm, this is the fun part, the shiny stuff. So let me get this big piece of styrofoam out of here and I'll show you what you get. Ooh, it's like Christmas morning. You get to see it before I do, or when I do. Oh yeah, beautiful. Look at that, blue urethane bushings. Look at those, nice. Solid, heavy, nice. Look at these pieces. Oh yeah, I can use the arms. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Nice stuff, nice stuff. Let me get it out of the bags. Leave the camera running here. Looks like it's all keyed left and right. So let's see, where's the front of this thing? Their logo. Mad Jax. I'm telling you, I'm getting a sticker that says gcmod.com for mine. So without Travis over at Golf Carts Modified, he, it, it would have been a nightmare trying to figure out what I needed for this cart, especially in the condition mine was in. So props to them. So yeah, let's get this out of the bag, show you guys that. Nice. MJFX Innovative, Mad Jacks. This is the one to get. Urethane bushings, nice hardware, beautiful, coated. This is protected thread, uh, thread protector up here. Really nice stuff. All right, let's get it on the cart. Well, thumbs up because this is something that nobody else is gonna show you on their videos. Look at how nice underneath of this AR armature is. Greasable fittings on each bushing set on the A-arms. You get urethane joints, ball joint. You get urethane bushings, sorry, everywhere, which is gorgeous. Tubular construction with drain holes here and here in case condensation or water gets in there it can weep out and get airflow gorgeous comes with a new spring so you don't need a front spring i didn't need to buy a front spring for mine mad jack stamped underneath it just a solid build and of course their warning sticker saying that it is supposed to go off road now and they're not assuming liability wow look at the quality that is really, really nice. GCmod.com, guys. Let's get this on the cart. Back over here at the cart, I got my four bolts that came out of here. I really mad because I don't want to use the old stuff, but um, I don't have time to go back to Ace. So I'm going to put these back in here. Remember when you loosened all this stuff, now this, this whole armature is loose. So um, you're going to slip these back into the frame. And uh, depending on how bad these nuts are, are, are messed up, I might have to go to the hardware store to get some new hardware. But hopefully not put these back in here all like this then that mad jacks armature that they this thing you're going to put a jack underneath that thing and get it stable 
tighten up your nuts. I'm just using the styrofoam the box came with, and a little cardboard box here just to hold it in place to get the first nut down there started onto this bolt and frame right there. And then I started the second one over here and I'm just gonna move to the back. This thing's not that heavy, but it's a little cumbersome. So I can see why in the official corporate video they use a jack. I just, I don't feel like going to get my jack right now. So that's what I'm doing. Hey, this is why everyone likes my videos. So I noticed whoever had this cart before me, when they put the uh, lower spring shackle on, they put the bolt up from the bottom. Well, I had to loosen up my rack and pinion so I could drop these long bolts down into the frame because if you try to do it, the rack and pinion boots in line with the bolt hole. So if that makes any sense, I had to kind of undo it, then drop it down. I got to do it on both sides. So that's kind of sucks, but no big deal. I want to know something else for you guys because the corporate videos don't ever talk about this stuff. This nut right here on my existing bolt coming through on the front part of the mounting armature uh really 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 narrow to get in there so you're gonna have to just use a wrench uh you can't get a socket on there because it's just not enough space so that's just something to note so these are going to take you a minute so get the front and the back on each side snugged up and then go back around and tighten them up i also want to go back through i'm going to do this after the video because i don't have them with me if you guys are watching this video get you some washers try to get some washers between I should try to take you under here to show you. Try to get some washers where you see those nuts coming through on the mounting plate here. They're really, I'd really like to see washers here. So it's not bolt on metal. There's no washers that they supply. They really should supply new bolts with this thing for the amount of money this costs. So that's just a note to Mad Jax. Uh, get some washers on that thing. All right guys, if you made it this far, pat yourself on the back. I just got the rack and pinion bolted back up a little touch up paint on the bolts so those aren't moving again got my bolts all the way through a little touch up paint on those added some washers like i mentioned in my previous clip down below here and now we're going to move on to the next phase but this is looking good out with the old and with the new all right so what we're going to do now is take these upper uh, control arms and this is the orientation that they go on the cart so this is your shock mount, this is your bushings, and then make sure that these little metal sleeves are also installed inside of these things. So when you get them over here, make sure that the sleeves don't fly out of here. Let me push this back in. I'll show you exactly what I, where they go. Right in here. So you slide them right into this little cradle. You don't need those little plates that yours came off with. And really what you're looking for is this shock mount to align with the upper shock mount here so this is in line with that and that's where your shocks are going to go so i'm going to get these installed with the hardware and then move on to the next step okay now that we have these upper arms installed i have them just loosely installed with their supplied hardware they do send you the uh, bolts for that next we're going to attach our spindles so this is the orientation the spindles go this is on this side with this arm pointing backwards to connect to the tie rod and then same on this side. So these already came with the bolts in, installed in them already. You're gonna back out these bolts like this. These are kind of long. So just for an FYI, these are 3 8 hex. These are the bolts that they furnished inside of the spindle. And the spindles ride, the bottom part rides on that end and the top part rides on that end right there. So I'm one-handed right now. So let me go ahead and get these installed just by putting the bolts through and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's a good view. I just have the bolts lightly set in here and you can see that now the steering tie rod end, the tie rod will go here and then this one will actuate the spindle side to side, which is really nice. I mean, look at that articulation. It's beautiful. Nice, sh nice shock up here. So you can use the stock shock. You got a nice stout heavy duty spring double leaf down here beautiful really beautiful kit thank you thank you travis for pointing me in the direction of this i was looking at another manufacturer it was 100 bucks cheaper and he was telling me about the mad jacks and god I'm glad i went with these these are much nicer okay so you can see i have everything loosely fit in here make sure everything fits nice and now what i'm going to do is add the locking adhesive before i i run all these all the way down so what i'll do is i'll just drip a little on here and here at the bottom and then run these in 
So the kit actually, it's nice. Mad Jacks actually supplies you with this locking adhesive so you don't have to worry about it, but the instructions do call for it. Their corporate video calls for it. So we're gonna go ahead and run with this. All right, threw some black nitrile gloves on. Cause I might have to pick up my kids anytime now. Put a little bit on here. All you need is a little bit on one side and then I'll turn it in a few runs and then put it on the other side, just a little bit. You don't need a bunch of this stuff. It's just to seat the thread so these things don't vibrate loose. You're going on the road and let go. I'll do the same for all four corners. I got one side tightened up and the kit, um, some of the parts that come pre-built on the kit aren't always tight. So this little eyelet at the bottom of the tower, at the top of the tower here, uh, need to be snugged up. You can see that's loose from the factory. So all this stuff has to be tightened up. Just make sure your articulation looks great, which this does side to side. And then you're gonna tighten these up, snug them up. Got this side nice and buttoned up. Everything's solid, tight. This articulates very nicely side to side. This is tightened up and straight. So when you tighten this up, you don't want this to bind. So get it nice and even uh, so there's good articulation side to side. You'll feel it if it's good or not. I have to tighten up this one at the end, which is gonna adjust um, my camber and caster on the wheels. And then this side's tightened up. Gonna go through, do my same thread locker on this side, get this side snugged up. Then we'll go in and do the rest of the steering connection. Now I got everything snugged up on the kit until I get to my adjustments. Keep all my little pr protective sleeves on all the spindles so you don't get dirt and grease on these so they don't grind up your bearings. Now I've taken my tie rod end and I've put new our new tie rod ends on my tie rod and I'm going to go ahead and uh, set these in uh, and these are going to go back here on each one of these little holes back here. So one there and one there and then the steering connection goes right here. Got some new tie rod ends on the tie rod installed. Everything's just loose right now. And then I'm installing my link between the rack and pinion and the Mad Jacks kit. So FYI, this link, all these castle nuts are 11 16 And this does, this does, you know, just in case you don't know this, this does articulate up and down, left and right. And so does this, so you can get this to set the way you want it to in here, because it, the geometry of that is, is angular, so it's not going to be a straight fit. So we're gonna go ahead and get these tightened up. There we go. 11 16 and invest in a set of gear wrenches. I'll put a link down below to some of those as well on Amazon. Gear wrenches are great. You can get the, I got the knockoff ones and I haven't had any problems with these things. So get this in here and this is tapered so you don't have to tighten the, the crap out of this thing. You can just get it nice and, you wanna get them nice and snug but you're not trying to rip the bolts open or rip the boots open on these things. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the same tie rod ends. And then this all may need adjustment later, depending on the wheels and tires that I put on this cart. But at least you know that now that all, by doing the way I did it, all the hardware in here is brand new. Everything from the knuckle, I did a video on this already, I'll put it down below. From the steering knuckle, rack and pinion, every single thing down here is brand new. So this steering should feel brand new and you'll know that nothing else is gonna wear out on you. Cause while you're down here and you got the whole cart apart, you got the whole cowl off, now's the time to replace all these parts. So I have my bearings packed here. Um, everything's new. I have new hubs, new boots, new seals, new everything. I got all this for about 60 bucks. Uh, I'll put a, a link down below where you can get these hubs. And what I'm gonna do now is get them installed on the lift kit now that everything is tightened. So what I have here is a spindle. I took off the boot that was covering it. I also cleaned this off to make sure that there is no sand, dirt, debris, anything on this because this will eat your bearing alive. I have some grease here from my gun. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of grease out of here. About that much is good. And we're gonna get a little bit of grease all over this spindle, but not on the threads. because that's got lock, it's got lock tight on it, thread locker. So I don't wanna, you don't wanna over grease, but you wanna get enough to reduce any friction that can be metal on metal. So I got a nice amount of grease on here and I'm gonna go ahead and slide my new hubs 
onto this spindle. All right, let's get the hub, get this nice and aligned to where we don't have any dirt or anything on here. And we're gonna slide these on nice. Couple little twists here, get them to seat. There. And there we go. Those are on. Beautiful. And that feels nice. Now we'll get our castle nut and our washer and our castle nut on there and put our cotter pin in. Okay, now I got my cotter pin installed nicely, um, looped over on each side so this castle nut cannot turn. The cotter is the right size for the castle, so everything looks really good. This is just a little bit beyond finger tight, not, not, a, not even a hair. And I got nice, easy movement here on the hubs and no lateral movement side to side. So this thing is ready for the dust caps. Broke my wood, I got the cap on. One more, a couple more hits here. And that's how you install a metal dust cap on a hub. All right, guys, moving on to the back of the cart. I got my uh, shop reorganized here. It's been a day or two, so now I'm gonna start tackling the back here on the lift kit. I got my jack stands removed. So what I'm gonna do on mine, you guys are probably not gonna do this on yours. I'm gonna pull my motor out just to make my axle a little bit lighter, but this doesn't really matter. It's not that much weight, but it is gonna help me a little bit. So I'm gonna remove my motor, which is just those one, two, three, four bolts around the back pull that motor out, and then we're gonna get this thing up on jack stands and get the jack under the axle. Okay, got the cart jacked up here and here. Got it on jack stands in the center of the frame so I can work these uh, leaf spring nuts and bolts in the front and back, and it's all nice and secure now. So I'm gonna leave my jack here on the passenger side, just sitting underneath that axle, and I'm gonna start working on this side. Three quarter. Okay, so here we are into the cart. We have our shock bolt, which is here. We got our U-bolt, which is here and here. So a 9 16 is gonna go on your shock bolt. You're gonna loosen this all the way down to here, but don't undo it. And you're gonna use your 5 8 socket here on your U-bolts to get these loose. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll flip it around. To get these loose, but don't completely bring them all the way down because you want this to kind of hang. So you can go work the other side and you're gonna come back and work this side. So let me get these loose. Nice and loose. And that'll loosen up the axle here now. Let's see, it's looser. Okay, here we are on the other side of the cart, left side, driver's side. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take these two U-bolt nuts off of here and the shock bolt off of here, free this up. And then we're gonna work on the leaf spring bolts, which are here in the back and they're up there in the front. Okay, so here's the nuts off of here. It's gonna free up this U-bolt, free up the shock. Keep all your hardware, because I don't know exactly what Magic supplied. I know that the kits vary from production time to production time. So this stuff will kind of just come out of here. There's your shock. I bought new shocks for my cart. Bought new leafs as well. You got a brake cable here in this retaining plate and this U-bolt needs to pull out of here. Let's get these leafs out. 9 16 nut on one side, 9 16 bolt on the other, and mine are lucky enough not to free spin right now while I'm taking these out, but I will notify you if you need to throw a, two wrenches on this thing or a wrench in a socket. The 9 16 on here, I mean, these bushings are all gone, so I'm putting new springs on mine. I got the nuts off of the leaf spring bolts on both sides. This thing wouldn't just bang out with a hammer. This is again why you gotta watch my videos because this is more real life. So I just started loosening this thing off with a 9 16 on this side. Get it kind of loosened up a little bit so I don't just bang the crap out of this thread or, or this bolt. So I'm gonna loosen these out on both sides or get them freed up and then tap them out. So that's just something to be note, uh, to note. But I also have the jack up under my axle to get the pressure off this leaf spring. So I can get this spring out of here. I'm gonna replace it with a new spring. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and start putting in these, it's a spacer lift on this thing. So these spacers go on. So let me work on getting the spring out. Okay, bolts are out of the spring. Just pop out. 
and get rid of this little single leaf and put in some heavy duties. So let's talk about this step right here. This is that bracket that was dangling on us. Let's look at this little, they send us a kit with a little alignment bolt right here in the kit. There's a little Allen key bolt, a couple of washers and some lock nuts. Apparently these don't serve any purpose but to align everything. So the thing is, is that the bolt's so small and it just kind of moves around in the hole here. So, and I also don't elaborate on what hole. So I'm gonna let you pause it there. That's the hole that their corporate video shows right there. And this is their really, really ridiculous instructions. That's what it says. Attach the bolt. Front hardware pack through the factory lower bracket. Does not serve as a fastener, blah, blah, blah. But look, look at that angle. And come on, guys. Really? So this is the hole I'm using right there. So thumbs up. This is helping you. So let me get that tightened up. Here it is all tightened up. It's not exactly aligned. You can see daylight through there. So this is a little bit of a gripe I have here with the alignment bolt but we'll see how important this is when we get down the road. But there it is, washer on one side, washer on the other, and a bolt. Moving on to the leaf springs. These are the new leaf springs I bought from 10LOL. These are four leafs instead of just one, so this is a heavy duty spring. The nice thing about the 10LOL kit, link down below in the description, is new U-bolts, which is awesome, and brand new bushings and sleeves, which is great. These things always sit nice and tight, I'm um, debating on whether not to grease these things. Uh, I probably won't put grease on them and I'll regret it, but you guys be the judge on that. But let me get these installed into the cart. So I'm gonna drop down my axle just a bit and also to accommodate for the leaf, for the lift kit here. And I still have all that hardware over there, uh, just loose on there. So that should get me to where I need to be. Yeah, I ate my words. I had to use a little bit of grease on these bushings. So I got the bushings installed with the sleeves on both sides, a little bit of grease, anywhere there's gonna be a friction point. So these can, these are very snug. So it's gonna be nice though. They're gonna All right, I really wish I had a cameraman, or camera woman, uh, to get video of this. Getting this new spring in with these bushings, these bushings are very oversized. So getting it in here, it was a nightmare of uh, trying to bang the crap out of it with a hammer. Uh, finally got it in, got this torqued down. So looking at our situation here, we have our little lift block. Now you'll see the axle below the leaf spring. We have the lift block, which goes in these little grooves right here. Get you a good shot here, like that. And the lower part of the lift block, just notice it's tipped, angled toward the front of the cart. So the lower part of the block goes here. I widened up my shackles on this side to get this uh, section of spring in. So if you guys are doing this, I would definitely recommend doing your leafs. It's gonna save you a lot of grief. So I'm gonna get this placed in here and basically this bolt and this nut on the leaf, I'll lift up my hand, you can kind of see it needs to align into that hole. So that's the name of the game now. All right, let me give you a better idea of the geometry here. So what you're trying to do is get your spacer installed in here. There's a little hole in the spacer, you can see through here, that matches up with the hole in your leaf, okay? So those match up and you're gonna put lift on your axle on the pumpkin to bring it up to get it to align into here. And then what you're gonna do is take your plate, install it on here and swing this around because the shock goes into this back hole right here. Your U-bolt drops into here, grabs this portion and squishes it together with the factory plate down below over here. Okay, so looking at the top down, we got our U-bolt installed into the furnished plate by Mad Jax. This is the hardware, or this is the hole where the shock hardware is gonna go. Bolts through on the top, goes to the stack, the leaf stack here. There's a hole in the lift block of the Mad Jax kit that aligns with the, the uh, screw or the bolt going through the leaf stack. Coming down, you have your plate that they made you install this little alignment screw in. The head of that Allen key goes up underneath. There's a hole here underneath the um, axle that that's going to go into. So the U-bolts will go into the into the two holes here, and that little Allen screw that they made you install is going to go into the bottom to align everything together. So let me get it all bolted up. up. In and here, I've got a shackle, and I got a shackle bolt that does not want to come out because the problem is this bolt is seized to the sleeve inside of the shackle. 
Now here's a caveat with this that doesn't work with the trick, is that the whole bolt will free spin, meaning I can get the nut off and it free spins. So the washer trick on the tighten down with the threads isn't gonna fly with this. I don't wanna cut the head off the bolt and then be stuck. So I think I'm gonna try to do a double cut. Hot knife through butter. So now it's as easy as that. All right, guys, this is definitely gonna be your most unconventional lift kit video on YouTube, but probably the most helpful. So <clears throat> I'll post a link in this big video's description of what I just had to do to get the old shackle bolt out of the seized up existing shackle and leaf spring. Had to cut it out. So what I wanted to do was flip the cart up over on its side, which is so easy. I mean, this thing's super light when you take the batteries out and the body off. And then I got to thinking, I'm like, let me see how hard it is to put the other side's lift assembly on it with the cart on its side, with that one already kind of loosely put on. It's simple. It's the easiest way to do it. You literally could just move stuff around with your hands and set the block and the bracket in place. You don't have to worry about the jack up and down fighting the weight of the cart. It's so much easier when you take the weight of the cart off of it. So if you guys are gonna do a lift on a golf cart, I'm gonna put this clip in here in this video. Turn the thing on its side. It'd probably be so much easier because this was really a lot easier than I thought it would be. So I got this side on, this assembly. Again, the plate, the U-bolt, the lift block, alignment bolt, and the bottom plate on here. I'm gonna put my nuts on here and snug them up. I'm gonna put the cart back down on the jack and then, uh, complete the video. All right, look at that, Heine. This is done. This cart is now lifted six inches and I kept the stock wheels and tires on here just on purpose so you guys could see the difference that it makes. Actually, looks pretty cool with those on there. So six inches up, front and back, lift kit done, Mad Jack, six inch. Next video in the series, I'm gonna go over those bad boys right there. Brand new wheels and tires from golfcarttiresupply.com. Thank you so much to Campbell over there. If you guys need tires for your golf cart, call Campbell, golfcarttiresupply.com, but that's another video. So I wanna thank you guys for watching this video on the six inch Mad Jacks lift kit on the Club Car DS. I hope this gave you a good, realistic, um, what to expect perspective slash completely how to install this uh, without all that corporate jargon where they make everything look too simple in that nice air conditioned environment that they're doing it in. So. Thank you guys for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe. Big thanks to GCMod.com, Golf Carts Modified. Couldn't have done this without them and their help and helping me get the right parts. Everything's on their website. They don't sell junk. They only sell the good stuff. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll get you in the next video. Later.